שלום לכולם בישראל, Good morning to our global partners and thank you so much for joining us. אז למי שלא מכיר, שמי יריב ענבר ואני מנהל את אגף ריל טיים ואנליטיקה במטריקס. I'm excited to open here the second webinar of a global collaboration between RTI and Matrix. ולמי שעדיין לא מכיר את RTI או את Matrix, אני אתן סקירה קצרה ככה שניישר קו. RTI היא חברת תוכנה מקסימה מעמק הסיליקון, המפתחת פתרונות חיבוריות עבור מערכות בזמן אמת. למערכת קוראים קונקסט DDS, אם לא הכרתם זה הזמן להכיר ובתוך המערכת אני יכול לפתח אפליקציות שמבצעות תקשורת שהפורטה שלהם הוא הפצת נתונים מהירה ובזמן אמת וכשאני אומר בזמן אמת אני מתכוון real real time ועל כל תווך שלא תביאו אז טכנולוגיית DDS של RTI הפכה להיות סטנדרט כמעט מחייב במגוון תעשיות, בתעשיות צבאיות, אזרחיות ובתוכן אפשר למצוא את uh, עולם הרכב, החלל, האוטומציה התעשייתית וכמובן ציוד רפואי מתקדם שעליו אנחנו נרחיב היום. Uh, הן עוזרות לנו לפתח ולחבר מערכות מורכבות, חיצוניות ופנימיות, כל זה בזמן אמת. אז זה ככה קצת על uh, מה עושה RTI ועל uh, מטריקס, למי שלא מכיר, אז uh, מטריקס הוקמה בשנת 2001 ונחשבת היום לחברת האינטגרציה הגדולה והמובילה בישראל. אנחנו מעסיקים קרוב ל-12,000 איש ומספקים שירותים ופתרונות טכנולוגיים לעסקים ממגוון תעשיות כמו פיתוח תוכנה, תשתיות, טכנולוגיות מידע, ענן, מחשוב ענן, אבטחת מידע, ניהול נתונים ושיפור דיגיטלי והאמת היא שבאמת באמת קשה למצוא היום תחום שמטריקס עוד לא אה, נמצאת בו, הכל, אה, תאתגרו אותנו מה שנקרא. אה, ולא, אנחנו לא נשכח אה, לציין שהשנה אנחנו חוגגים בת מצווה לשותפות האמיצה בין אה, RTI למטריקס, 12 שנים שבהם מטריקס מייצגת את אה, חברת RTI בישראל עם מאות פרויקטים בעולמות השונים. אה, לפני שנמשיך, אני רוצה להראות לכם על קצה המזלג על עולם ההלפקר והמדיקל ובכלל על מה נדבר היום, ככה קצת טיזר שייתן לנו כיוון תמונה מה הולך להיות, אז בואו נראה. With costs rising and medical errors still a leading cause of death, the healthcare industry is at an inflection point and facing the challenge of lowering costs while improving the quality of patient care. At RTI, we believe in a future where this is made possible by connected medical devices that communicate seamlessly and securely with each other throughout the healthcare system. And we know through the convergence of advanced technologies and pervasive networking, the future of connected healthcare is possible today. From connected AI-driven systems that are fueling ongoing improvements in medical imaging and which allow doctors to better observe, diagnose and treat patients, to robotic devices that interact remotely with the best surgeons in the world to perform precise, minimally invasive surgery for better patient outcomes, to provider networks, where millions of medical devices work together seamlessly to boost operational efficiency, make accurate clinical decisions, and drive down hospital errors. Critical components within the healthcare ecosystem are now being connected, and that connectivity drives costs downward while also improving patient care. This pervasive connectivity is enabled through Data Distribution Service, or DDS, a proven medical-grade standard for intelligently distributing interoperable data in real time, securely, reliably, and at scale. And as the commercial leader in DDS technology, RTI delivers on the promise of a connected future with our industry-leading Connext DDS software. Connext DDS as a connectivity framework allows disparate, distributed and connected healthcare systems to share real-time near patient data across multiple devices, multiple networks, from the edge to the fog to the cloud. DDS provides a data bus, a shared data space for data in motion that allows near patient data to be shared reliably, securely and in real time with all of the devices within a hospital room. and with all of the local applications, including clinical decision support systems, and with the enterprise healthcare IT applications that may be housed on-premise or in the cloud. DDS is the technology that makes the right data available at the right time, in the right way, to the right devices and applications, 
in order to enable more predictive, more efficient, and more individualized patient care. This real-time data integration between devices provides a foundation for automated therapy, leading to better patient outcomes, improved clinical workflows, and increased provider efficiency. The future of healthcare is connected, and through RTI Connects DDS, healthcare providers and their suppliers can deliver on that promise. Visit RTI.com to see how we are enabling the future for connected healthcare. אז האמת שהיה לנו ויכוח אם להקרין את הסרט הזה או לא, כי עשינו כזה טיזר שיכול להיות שאנשים יגידו, אז בשביל מה אני צריך להיות בוובינר, הראת לנו הכל. אנחנו נדבר היום על שלושה תחומים, רובוטים רפואיים, ציוד רפואי מחובר ומכשירי הדמיה רפואית. לגבי רובוטים לרפואה, רובוטים רפואיים נכנסים יותר ויותר אל עולם הציוד הרפואי לניתוחים. הציוד המתקדם מבצע אבחון, הדרכה, העברת מידע בזמן אמת ובעצם מה לא. ציוד רובוטי מסייע לרופאים לבצע ניתוחים מסובכים בדיוק רב, גמישות ואמינות. אז אנחנו עובדים עם הרבה מאוד חברות שמתעסקות בתחומי הרובוטיקה הרפואית, מחברים, חיישנים, רובוטיקה מתקדמת, בינה מלאכותית, כל זה יחד יוצר פרויקטים מאוד מעניינים עם הרבה כישוריות והרבה דאטה שעובר. בעולמות ה... ציוד הרפואי המחובר, אנחנו מסייעים גם פה בקישוריות, מייעלים את זמינות העברת הנתונים ובכך כמובן את השיפור בטיפול, בטיפול בחולים. איסוף של כל המידע מהחיישנים ולהביא אותו מכל מקום לכל מקום בזמן שיא. והנושא האחרון בעצם שניגע בו זה הנושא של ההדמיה, אבל תקנו אותי, אמרו לי שלא אומרים הדמיה אלא אומרים דימות. אז אני אגיד דימות שנהיה מסודרים, ומערכות ההדמיה המודרניות משרתות מספר פונקציות של דיאגנוסטיקה וטיפולים, רוב הפלטפורמות המוכרות לנו היום מורכבות מהרבה תת מערכות המחוברות יחד, רשתות נוירוניות, Machine Learning, ניתוח נתונים ועוד, והמערכת בעצם אוספת את כל הדאטה, משלבת את זה וגם מציגה את הדברים. יש עוד המון, אבל אנחנו רוצים, יש לנו וובינר, מה שנקרא מלא לשמוע היום, אז בואו נרוץ ישר לרשימת הדוברים שלנו. נמצא איתנו פה דארן פורס מ-RTI, גל שלזינגר ממטריקס ואורחת הכבוד שלנו, our keynote speaker is Tracy Roche, the chief innovation officer of DocBox. ולמי שעדיין לא מכיר את DocBox, זהו המסייע הרפואי בטיפול קריטי בחולים, שיוצר פלטפורמת IoT, אינטגרציה ותיעוד של מערכות רפואיות. שנייה אחת אחרונה לפני שנתחיל, אנחנו עוסקים בבריאות היום, אז בואו רגע נחייך ואז נלך לדברים הרציניים יותר. That killed him. Paging Dr. Palmer, Dr. Barbara Palmer, dial 452. Okay. נושא אחרון, עניינים טכניים, יש לכם בתחתית המסך אייקונים, אם יש לכם... בעיות או נושאים טכניים, כל דבר זה לחצו על הצ'אט, תכתבו לנו, ואם יש לכם שאלות לדוברים, אנא לחצו על Q&A ונשתדל לענות על הכל בסוף הוובינר, בבקשה בבקשה, in English. אנחנו רוצים להעביר את השאלות האלה לכל חברי הפאנל בסוף, ואנחנו נשלח את ההקלטה של הוובינר לכל הרשומים, אני מקווה שתהנו, גל, אליך. תודה רבה יריב. יריב. אוקיי, אז לפני שאני אעביר את השרביט לדרן, שידבר יותר על האימפלמנטציה בהיבטים של הלסקר, אני אתן לכם סקירה קצרה על היבטים של מה זה DDS בכמה דקות הקרובות, ומשם הדברים יותר ברורים בהמשך המצגת גם בהקשרים של דוקבוקס. אז DDS, ראשי תיבות של Data Distribution Service, מדובר פה על תקינה בינלאומית לתקשורת מבוזרת בין מערכות שהיא fully decentralized, כלומר אין לנו שום גורם מרכזי באמצע בחיבור בין שני רכיבים 
בתוך הרשת שאנחנו מדברים עליה, והעיקרון ש-DDS עובד עליו הוא עיקרון תוכנתי מאוד מאוד נפוץ היום בעולם, שקונספט בארכיטקטורה של פאבלי סאבסקרייב, שהבסיס של העיקרון שלה הוא בעצם הפרדת צימודיות, דיקאפלינג. הפרדת הצימודיות, הצימודיות הזאת היא מתכוונת ל... הפרדת צימודיות בין אה, הגורם היוצר של המידע לבין הצרכן של המידע, שבאופן הזה, מרמה של ארכיטקטורת התוכנה שלי עד לכדי יישום ברמת הקוד, השיטה שלי היא בה שהמידע הוא במרכז, ואני לא בא ומתקשר עם רכיב מסוים, אלא אני אומר בעצם ברמת הארכיטקטורה, איזה מידע אני מעוניין לקבל ואיזה מידע אני אה, יכול לשתף עם הסביבה שלי, ואותה תשתית, במקרה הזה DDS, אחראית על הפצת המידע לכל הצרכנים השונים אה, בצורה מאוד יעילה ואפקטיבית עם הרבה מאוד יכולות מעל זה שעוד שנייה נרחיב לגביהם. DDS ברמת העל הוא גם סטנדרט לפרוטוקול בעצם, פרוטוקול אפליקטיבי אה, שרץ מעל UDP, TCP ונרחיב על זה טיפה בהמשך אה, והוא סטנדרט גם ל-API, כלומר ל-DDS יש לו API סטנדרטי אה, ל-C, C++, Java, Python וכן הלאה שאיתו למעשה בתור אנשי פיתוח מקיימים איתו אינטראקציה. שוב אני מדגיש, DDS הוא תשתית מבוזרת לחלוטין, אין לנו שום גורם מרכזי באמצע, בניגוד להרבה תשתיות ביזור קיימות היום בשוק, וזה אחד מהדברים שמייחדים את DDS. עכשיו אם נסתכל ברמת ה-high level מה הייעוד של DDS בעולם, DDS מסתכל על כל רכיב בכל מערכת, בסופו של דבר DDS משתמשים בו בהרבה מאוד ורטיקלים, מ-healthcare ל-smart cities, ל-defense ו-airspace, עד לכדי, ובכל ו- המקומות האלה הרעיון הוא ש-DDS מסתכל על מערכת או אפליקציה בתוך מערכת מבוזרת, כמשהו שיש לו שתי פונקציות מרכזיות. הראשונה היא שלכל אפליקציה בעצם יש לה את ה-business logic שלה, אם זה אלגוריתמיקה, או ביזנס לוג'י כזה או אחר, user interface, לא משנה מה, והחלק השני זה בעצם ה-IO של אותה אפליקציה, ה-input וה-output שלה. ה-input וה-output הזה במערכות מורכבות הוא יכול להיות מאוד מאוד מורכב, כי הוא יכול לערב מערכות הפעלה שונות שמכניס פה מורכבות כלשהי, הוא יכול לדבר על רשתות מורכבות מעבר ללוקל אריה נטוורק, הוא יכול לדבר על היבטים אפליקטיביים או הרבה יותר מורכבים, ש, שלמעשה DDS בא לחסוך אותם, אז למעשה כל לוג, לוגיקת ביזור מידע ש-DDS אה, אה, מספק לכם, הוא בעצם חוסך לכם את הפיתוח ברמת האפליקציה. אה, זה עוד היבטים שקשורים ל-redundancy, ל-security שאני ארחיב עליהם עוד מעט, ועוד הרבה מאוד דברים, וזה בעצם ה- הייעוד של DDS בחיים, לספק לכם את כל היכולות האפליקטיביות והתשתיתיות שקשורות ליכולות של ביזור מידע. אה, בסביבה שאנחנו מדברים עליה בסופו של דבר. עכשיו בסופו של דבר כמו שדיברנו על DDS, הרעיון הקונספטואלי הכללי של DDS הוא מדבר על עוד פעם תשתית של פאבלי סאבסקרייב, שבה ברמה הקונספטואלית יש לנו בס תקשורת מרכזי, שבו כולם מדברים אחד עם השני, משתפים מידע, כל אחד משתף איזה מידע הוא רוצה לצרוך ואיזה מידע הוא רוצה לשלוח ולשתף עם הסביבה שלו, ואחד מהדברים שמנחים את DDS בארכיטקטורה של הפאבלי סאבסקרייב זה קונספט שנקרא Data Centricity. Data Centricity בליבה שלו מדבר על הרעיון ש-DDS, יש לו מודעות, לא מודעות ברמה של Machine Learning או משהו כזה, אבל הרעיון שיש לו מודעות לגבי התוכן ו- והצרכנים ויצרני המידע השונים ברשת. ועצם המידע שהוא, עצם העובדה שהוא מודע לנתונים האלה כחלק מהפצת המידע, בניגוד להרבה מאוד תשתיות הפצה אחרות שקיימות בשוק כמו MQTT, קפקא, רביט וכן הלאה, ל-DDS יש לו את היכולת לבוא ולהבין מה המידע שעובר בתוכו ועל ידי כך הוא מאפשר לכם לבוא ולבצע כל מיני לוגיקות, DDS מנגיש לכם כל מיני לוגיקות ויכולות, לדוגמה של תעדוף של מידע, אני יכול לדוגמה להחליט שיש לי מידע הרבה יותר קריטי שאמור לעבור ברשת ו-DDS יכול לתעדף לכם אותו מקצה אל קצה, כי הוא מודע לתוכן של המידע שעובר, הוא יכול גם לבוא ולתעדף לכם נתונים כמו פילטריזציה של מידע, הוא יכול לדאוג לכך שמידע שאני לא רוצה לקבל אותו, הוא לא עומד בחתך מסוים של מידע שאני מעוניין לקבל, ה-DDS מלכתחילה לא ישלח לכם אותו. וכל היכולות האלה מאופשרות עצם העובדה ש-DDS מודע לתוכן של המידע שעובר, ו- ו- וזה, וזה כל הקונספט של Data Centricity ואיך שהדבר הזה בא לידי ביטוי. תחת המעטפת הזאת של Data Centricity, ל-DDS יש לו אוסף של יכולות, שקוראים להם quality of service, 
אבל אפשר להסתכל עליהם בסופו של דבר כאוסף של קונפיגורציות ויכולות ש-DDS מספק לכם, שנותנות לכם את היכולת להפעיל כל מיני היבטים ורבדים שקשורים לשיטת הפצת המידע, תעדוף המידע, היבטים של סקיוריטי, של פילטריזציה שהזכרתי מקודם, הפרדה בין גורמים ברשת מסיבות כאלה ואחרות, רידנדנסי, ועוד הרבה מאוד רבדים ש-DDS מספק אותם, שמתאימים לעשרות יוסקסים, מאות יוסקסים, בהרבה מאוד ורטיקלים שונים ש-DDS בא לידי שימוש בהם. אחד מה-Quality of Service המשמעותיים האלה, אפשר שאני אדבר עליו, הוא Quality of Service של Security. ולפני שנגיע לזה, כשאני אסתכל ברמת העל, מבחינת איך נראית האפליקציה בעצם, או מערכת, שהיא מבוססת על DDS, אז אם אתם מסתכלים בעצם, כמו שהזכרתי מקודם, DDS וסולובר הוא תשתית uh, תוכנה, הוא, הוא middleware שלכם בעצם, שמולו יש לכם API, שהאפליקציה שלכם שכתובה ב, בכל אחת מהשפות שרשומות פה, ויש עוד הרבה כאלה שלא רשומות, שמתחתיו הפרוטוקול תקשורת שלו, שיכול לרוץ בהרבה מאוד פורמטים uh, מעל UDP, TCP, ברשתות צרות סרט, בשרד ממורי, ברשתות רח, רחבות, ב-wide area network, זה מספק לכם את כל היכולות האלה מעל כל הסביבות האלה, בצורה שקופה לחלוטין, עם תמיכה באין ספור מערכות הפעלה, גם בסביבות real time ו-non real time, וזה בסופו דבר ה-SDK, בסופו דבר שמסתכלים עליו ברמה של DDS. כנושא אחרון, ואנחנו נרחיב עליו קצת בהמשך, אחד מה-Quality of Service הבולטים של DDS, הוא Quality of Service שמדבר על Security. סקיוריטי זה רובד מאוד מאוד חשוב בכל אפליקציה שמדברים עליה, במיוחד ברבדים של הלסקר, ואחד מהיכולות של DDS בהקשרים של סקיוריטי, הם מדברים בסופו של דבר על שלושה, שלוש אה, פונקציות מרכזיות ש-DDS חושף לכם, אחת מהן זה יכולות למעשה של אותנטיקציה, של לוודא שהגורם שאיתו אתם מתקשרים ברשת או בתוך המחשב הוא מאושר לתקשר איתכם, השני זה יכולת של אה, קריפטוגרפיה שכוללת בתוכה הצפנה של המידע ויכולת חתימה של המידע, כך שהמידע שאתם יכולים לדעת שקיבלתם הוא מידע שהוא במאה אחוז, אף אחד לא נגע בו בדרך ואף אחד, לא, אחד לא יכול לקרוא אותו. והדבר האחרון שאני אזכיר אותו בהקשרים האלה, זה יכולת מאוד מאוד משמעותית שיש ב-DDS, שמבדילה אותו מאוד מיכולות הפצה אחרות שקיימות, שתשתיות אבטחה אחרות שקיימות בשוק, כמו TLS ו-SSL. ש-DDS נותן לכם להטמיע מדיניות אבטחה ייחודית לפרויקט שלכם, שזה למעשה הפיצ'ר של אקסס קונטרול שמצוין פה. הפיצ'ר הזה, למעשה של אקסס קונטרול, מאפשר לכם לבוא ולהגדיר מדיניות אבטחה, וככה בעצם כל אפליקציה אפשר להגדיר לה לאיזה הודעות היא יכולה אה, לקרוא ואיזה הודעות היא יכולה לכתוב, ממש ברמה של ההודעה, אה, סוג ההודעה שעוברת ברשת, וככה לבוא ולהגדיר את הסוג של הרשאות גישה, ברמה תקשורתית אפשר להסתכל על זה, של מה לכל אפליקציה מותר לה לגשת עליו. וזה מאפשר לכם רמה שליטה הרבה יותר מדויקת על הארכיטקטורה הכללית, וכל זה אה, מתאפשר תחת סביבת ניהול שהיא שקופה לאפליקציה ומאוד פשוטה להטמעה, כי הכל בסדר הרבה לידי ביטוי ברמה של קונפיגורציה אפליקטיבית שלכם. אה, ו, ושוב, הרעיון הזה, גם תחת סביבת הסקיוריטי, ש-DDS שומר על אותו מודל שהוא fully decentralized, ומאפשר לכם עדיין לתמוך במערכות אה, שהן עובדות בסביבה שהיא מאוד real time, אה, ברמת דטרמיניסטיות מאוד מאוד גבוהה. אז אה, זהו, זה מסכם, זה מסכם את הנקודות ש... לגבי נושא שבהמשך שבה, אה, שלי, ונעביר את השרביט לדארן. אוקיי. Okay, so, uh, so, so what we're seeing then across these different devices uh, is this integration of, of uh, data and systems and uh, integration across all these different applications. And essentially what we're seeing now is this uh, technology ecosystem of uh, technologies, of devices and networks of, of, of uh, integration that is needed to address the, the issues uh, right now in healthcare, issues that Um, now are resolved around data centricity, data centric uh, technologies, and to be able to leverage that to actually uh, enable more uh, sophisticated devices and systems. So when you talk about uh, medical devices and in a scenario where you have, let's say a surgical robotic system, which is essentially a system of systems, systems that are 
uh, a, uh, that need that have various comp uh, components, computing nodes, algorithms, heterogeneous devices. These are all um, uh, complex uh, systems that need to operate reliably. There's real-time performance considerations needs to be secure. And also it's also these devices are also serving as a platform for real-time guidance and intelligence. So as we've seen uh, surgical robotics become more advanced, more integrated in the operating room, we're seeing that as a technological driver for minimally invasive uh, procedures and systems. So now you're seeing more of this integration and technology uh, to deliver more precise, more advanced therapies, uh, to really deliver a whole new generation of surgery and surgical care, uh, and that's relying on these types of integrated systems and technologies. And to how does uh, Connext, how does RTI Connext, uh, how does this technology benefit these types of systems in this use case? Well, when you look about uh, a detailed view of what this what these systems look like, it's really a complicated uh, system of, of subsystems. And so the, the desire is to have this open architecture of interoperable data flow uh, for robotic control, for data fusion, for intelligent applications and systems that are integrating not just that device and that, that surgical robot and all those in interconnected components, but uh, also potentially other devices and systems, navigation, imaging, uh, vision systems, visualization systems. So the need to be to have this decentralized architecture for data sharing uh, that's also modular and distributed, uh, that's also highly reliable. So Gal mentioned uh, the quality of service attribute, and that is a critical component of this uh, to ensure reliability and also to be able to optimize performance in these, these types of, of systems. Uh, and then also because of this uh, decentralized architecture, the ability to upgrade these systems uh, resu uh, results in a very flexible architecture. So essentially um, systems don't have to be redesigned as there's new connectivity requirements, new types of applications. Uh, this, this module architecture and the system that's designed for real-time distributed data sharing uh, uh, enables that type of, of scalability. Cybersecurity is a big component of this, Gal talked about that as well, about the ability to secure the data flows across the device ecosystem, how critical uh, that is. And that's something that I think most people have, have seen, the, the increasing uh, regulatory uh, impact and scrutiny of medical devices. And uh, unfortunately, the, the increasing uh, uh, rate of cybersecurity incidents and for device manufacturers and hospitals. So uh, the increasing focus on uh, the ability to secure both internal uh, interfaces, communication interfaces, as well as external interfaces is critical to be able to demonstrate that systems are safe and secure uh, across the device ecosystem. So be able to, um, to deliver, to design and implement uh, a scalable secure architecture is critical. So leveraging all of these components uh, for those attributes is a, is a, is a, very, uh, is a very valuable um, uh, technology in, in, in this area. So another use case, and uh, excited to hear uh, Tracy talk more about this, is uh, in the situation of critical care and monitoring. So uh, when you think about an intensive care system, an intensive care unit, you have lots of different devices around a patient bed. They're all uh, you know, sending, receiving data. There's lots of um, uh, uh, sensors, uh, um, applications, and systems that all have to work together, physiological parameters, alarms. You have device data. All of these things uh, need to operate uh, with very high reliability. So uh, you have a, a an environment where, look at the bottom right, where you have um, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, you, you know, scalability that's needed up to 1,000 devices and needs to be highly scalable and configurable uh, and also needs to be very secure. So be able to secure all these different data types uh, and also uh, be able to have remote access. So for example, to be able to see that device and device status and patient status at the bedside or at a central station or even in a remote or tele-ICU type of situation. So, uh, and as also be intelligent as well. So be able to integrate all these devices and data and then also uh, do something intelligent with that. So to have local uh, applications that are able to do that front-end processing uh, and do something intelligent at the point of care is critical. So uh, being able to have that, that live continuous data in this dynamic environment, patients are moved around, mobile devices, all of these, these things for critical real-time and distributed data flow are, are powerful needs in, in this type of environment. So uh, what does that look like from a, uh, uh, how does Connects benefit this type of use case? You can see how 
uh, this, uh, this connectivity is designed for this type of environment where you need this distributed real-time data flow systems that are uh, need to be um, de integrated uh, devices that need to be and, and applications that need to be um, uh, uh, have this, this capability of real-time performance, monitoring, view, and control really across this, the whole device eco ecosystem of operational parameters, clinical parameters, and intelligent applications that that really can can come and go. So be able to uh, join the network, leave the network, etc., uh, is a very powerful thing. And so having this dynamic capability of uh, real time, uh, scalable performance uh, is critical. And then of course, again, uh, being able to be uh, data centric in terms of cybersecurity. So now be able to secure the data flow. Uh, independent of network location is, is is critical because you can see the need for this reliable distributed data sharing. It's not just across devices; it's across networks and 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 different uh, either local or distributed remote environments. So, be able to secure that data independent and also share that data independently of the the of the network and location is is critical. And really, designing an architecture that's built for this type of distributed uh, real time data flow uh, for this use case. So uh, yeah, so this uh, technology is is a uh, is working. I'm sorry, my slides are going here. Um, uh, we're working with the uh, leading companies and emerging companies in developing these these types of innovative uh, systems and technologies. This framework is uh, used for multiple programs and product lines, streamlining the the a uh, reference architectures and the the uh, enabling this new technologies, these new uh, generation really of systems that are uh, that need this type of interoperable real time data flow, uh, and as well as uh, cybersecurity addressing all of the 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 uh, the the, um, the key elements of uh, secure communications for distributed systems. So the, the ability to um, enable secure architecture, secure communication architectures uh, to ensure these types of, of least privilege uh, access and data control is very, very important as well, while, while uh, also addressing the simultaneous requirements of performance and reliability uh, and and uh, real time data flow. So so this is the uh, essentially a the foundation for uh, devices and systems uh, today. Uh, and Tracy is going to talk more about other other use cases and systems. Uh, and uh, you know we're excited. I'm excited. My background is in medical devices. I'm excited to be on the technology side, really working with the industry to deliver uh, next generation systems and solutions. Uh, that is really making a huge impact in the device industry and, and of course, uh, and most importantly, in patient care and, and clinical efficiency. So thank you very much, uh, Shalom, and I will look forward to uh, hearing about uh, Tracy's talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Darren. Um, and now, as mentioned before, to our keynote speaker, Tracy Rausch, which is the Chief of Innovation Officer at uh, DocBox. Tracy, please. Good evening, everyone. For um, everyone, and um, um, what I want to talk about is a little bit about um, how we've built this an open platform in order to enable point of care or bedside connectivity and what that has actually has the impact on a crowd on the hospital system um, and a little bit about um, how RTI um, has helped us on the way to do this and um, oh there we go um, and um, you know where where we're going with the future pieces of that. So there'll be three parts of this conversation, and then um, you know we'll be open to questions. So um, DocBox was founded in 2007. Um, it was based on a vision of providing safer, higher quality, and lower cost healthcare. Um, at the time um, of this, is the challenges of coming forward. Um, we weren't able to actually. Um, we were barely able to even connect medical devices, let alone um, actually be able to leverage and use that data. Um, for any type of decision making, new visualizations, um, and at, currently at that time and still today, um, you know, for an algorithm to get integrated at the bedside for real time computing, it takes about seven to ten years to get that into the marketplace. Um, and with you know the emergence and explosion of data, that has to be accelerated. Um, so the goal of this was actually to build 
um, a modular platform that we could deploy these systems. Um, this funding was originally funded by the United States Army, um, but is now commercially available as um, DocBox's clinician assistant. Um, and what the APRA platform um, provides is a core set of functionality to provide care anytime and anywhere. Um, and these, these capabilities that are core to the platform are, are capabilities that any application would need to use. Um, it would be the source and truth of patient identity, um, the connectivity of medical devices, a, a framework for cybersecurity, and a framework for safety, knowing that, you know, there's, there's, Everything is focused around a patient. The source of data in healthcare comes from the patient, and the um, the um, there's there's only one source for location. But this data needs to be distributed across many different hospital systems for various purposes and various uses. So why is this needed? Why do we need automation? Um, I use this picture um, because it kind of speaks it, it speaks volumes. This is an actual photograph from a hospital in the U.S. during COVID. Um, this is not something that was just isolated to the U.S., but seen globally. Um, because of the shortage of PPE and the amount of time it took to take on and off PPE um, while they were in the hospital, they actually moved their medical devices into the hallway. Um, instead of saying, oh, we can do this automatically, we can connect to this remotely, um, you know, we all can connect, you know, you can turn your, I can turn my lights on from halfway around the world at my house, but I can't actually uh, change a setting on an infusion pump or ventilator six feet away um, at the bedside. And that's, that's one of the challenges that, that has occurred is that, you know, this system around the bedside is a series of siloed systems um, with multiple vendors in multiple different locations. And um, <clears throat> healthcare providers are very, uh, ingenious and in, in working around and solving their problems. But um, from a systems engineering perspective, in my mind, this is not acceptable. Um, and, you know, you can't hear devices outside the room, Pati you know, patients aren't going into the room. Um, this, you know, there's a lot of challenges here. And as I said, I like to use this picture because it, it speaks volumes um, to the, the current state of, um, you know, most patient bedsides in a, in a hospital. Um, so how do you provide care anytime or anywhere? Um, so the approach we've taken is a platform-based approach. Um, that underlying platform is actually leveraging um, RTI's DDS Connects. Um, and you'd be able to allow that hospital to be expanded outside the bedroom. Whether you're taking care of a patient at home, you're taking care of a patient in transport, you're actually taking, you know, using your higher skilled physicians at, at larger hospitals to take care of remote or rural facility. Um, you should be able to, to do all of these things um, in a way where you can do this in a smart way, um, you, can tr you can share processes, you can share insights, you can accumulate data across multiple sites and locations um, in order to allow you to able to do this. And this is the goal of DocWalks is to be able to um, build out that infrastructure um, and that capabilities to do this in a safe, a safe and a secure way. Um, that's actually optimal, efficient. Um, and, you know, the number one key of our, our mantra is we need to make the clinician's lives easier um, and not more complicated. So this should be some sort of a seamless integration and a seamless solution um, that provides them more intelligence and more systems. So the approach we took was three. Um, one, um, around data. Um, we want to collect complete, accurate, and contextually rich data. Um, the data in our system is actually normalized as it comes in. Um, then we leverage, um, you know, the connects uh, solutions to basically move that data around our system. Um, we repeatedly and frequently transport between, um, you know, DDS and uh, web services. We go back to DDS where it's needed. Um, you know, we want to be able to analyze those results. We want to be able to boil down that data. We want to be able to leverage that data. And we want to be able to actually, you know, merge data across different sites, different locations. Um, and we want to actually have an understanding of what that data means um, in our system. The next um, is, is actually the platform itself. Um, it's an open platform. We want to allow best of breed adoption. So we want the best algorithms, the best devices. Um, you know, we want that comp competition to be able to occur. We want you to be able to easily exchange that information. Um, you know, if there's a better algorithm out there, you shouldn't have to replace the entire hospital infrastructure um, for that algorithm to actually enable to do this. Um, we are fully supportive of a standards-based solution. So um, whether it's a DDS you know, the OMG standard where DDS is or the IEEE standards or an ISO standard, um, we're, we're able to actually incorporate those into our system. 
Um, our system is extremely scalable because we start at a single patient and we scale up based on the number of patients that you have. Um, so we're not dependent on a large enterprise or a cloud-based infrastructure, um, but basically this platform moves with the patient and um, that means that patient can be at home or they can be in the hospital. You know, we're a software, a software platform. Um, we run off of general computing hardware um, and we've been able to do that. The third piece of this is the safety and security framework. Um, you know, a lot of this platform has been actually done in the work around regulatory science um, and cybersecurity research on how do you actually secure a system like this? How do you actually understand what are the safety pieces of the system and not making them a secondary requirement, but a primary requirement? Um, because you want that AI algorithm or that medical device and the people building those, building those solutions to actually not have to worry about those things as much um, as they are to be able to focus on the development of the algorithm and the situation. The third piece is how do you deploy not only new medical devices, but how do you de deploy medical devices as software? And we're actually that platform where those medical devices as software can actually be hosted on the system. And you wanna be able to be able to quickly change these out. You wanna be able to change practice through innovation. We want the hospitals to be able to innovate themselves to solve their own problems and not actually be restricted um, by what they're actually building and um, you know, by but what vendors they have or what solutions they need to move forward. Um, but they can innovate on their own and move and move medicine and forward. Um, so we have three parts of our platform. Um, the first platform is the edge um, at the enterprise level and then in the cloud. Um, so the edge, the edge piece of the platform, it sits next, right next to the bedside. Um, it allows for nursing documentation, data visualization. We actually have the incorporation of telemedicine into the solution now too. You get all of that in one solution. It integrates all the medical devices around the bedside. Um, and then that data can be distributed um, not only at the enterprise level, but um, also an emerging cloud structure as we, you know, be able to share between facilities and infrastructure um, as you move forward. Um, with this piece, you know, we can host applications on the platform. We've actually hosted a couple of third-party applications already. Um, we're continuing to add more of those applications as well as build our own. Um, and then we have the ability to integrate the medical devices. I think one of the keys is that all of these systems run off of a standard data model and a normalized data structure. Um, and then we leverage um, the Connects and DDS solutions to be able to actually be able to um, put the pieces you know, of, of managing quality of service, managing reliability, understanding you know, latency of data, that sort of, we, we can handle all of that and that actually happens um, you know, within our DDS implementation on our platform itself. Um, so so why, why would a hospital buy this? Why would a, a healthcare provider wanna look at this? Um, one, this open scalable uh, platform allowing for third parties, as I said, allows them to practice, uh, to pick best of breed. Um, we've actually seen a reduction in nursing documentation time because we've been able to separate out the ability for how do you easily document through a visualization and how do you visualize the data um, in the solution. They don't have to be the same solution, which has been what has been traditionally done. Um, we've seen a 70% reduction in nursing documentation time by able to be able to put this at the bedside, allow them to work through their workflows and you know meet those clinicians at their workflow instead of having them change their workflow for their technology solution. Um, we can, we've been able to demonstrate not only locally at a hospital, um, but actually part of um, you know, a national project that we did within the United States that we could do near real-time operations data. We can tell how many ventilators are being used, how many monitors are being used, how many beds are available currently being used, what's the status of that unit, um, what was the last time a person was actually seen at the bedside. We can, we can actually show that data um, within minutes um, of when it's occurring in the system, you know, at a, a command center type level. Um, the next piece of this is actually we, we help with revenue recovery um, in a hospital um, because we have the source of the data um, and we have a, a very comprehensive record, we can put together an audit trail of that patient so we can be able to see through physiological data and nursing documentation. We can see bedside procedures that frequently get missed in bills, um, the acuity of a, of a patient that's occurring, um, and basically the entire timeline of that patient stay is actually visible um, directly at the bedside as well as retrospectively in data in our system. Um, we have an emerging security framework um, that allows us not only to secure 
the medical devices from the network, but because medical devices are quite frequently um, the source of some of these cyber attacks within hospital systems, um, we actually protect the hospital from those medical devices also through a layer of separation from the devices to the rest of the hospital network, although making that a data available for everyone. Um, we, as, as part of our infrastructure, we have the ability um, to enable telemedicine um, so we can bring audio and video through the system. So you're sharing a platform, you're sharing hardware, um, you're sharing communications. Um, and then the, the last piece is what's evolving for us um, is basically a safety rate framework for AI and ML, um, as well as autonomous systems. Um, and, you know, we see this as the future of healthcare and the way to loosen this burden is through, uh, through autonomous and intelligent medical systems. Um, so that could be anything from just automated documentation, automatic um, visualization to um, fully closed loop physiological control um, uh, of a patient um, for ventilation. That actually work is honestly ongoing with us um, through several of our partners. Um, and we're actually excited to be able to leverage our platform, um, you know, to bring that autonomy to the, to the to directly to the bedside to take care of patients. Um, so I'm going to get into a little bit of the data that we see in the system and what we can collect. Um, so we're, we have the ability to collect trends, settings, alarms, um, down to the waveforms. All of this data in our system is time synchronized. Um, you can be able to not only see um, when things occur with a patient, um, we've been able to detect events such as in this picture, um, they, they, the defibrillation of a patient. Um, you know, we have that synchronized with the underlying waveforms of the patient. And then um, you actually can see the settings of the medical devices while those events occurred. So you can be able to retrospectively review all of this information. Um, on top of that, we've paired this with, with scores, assessments, and clinical observations. Um, this is a little bit of our user interface where you can, um, the nursing staff can quickly go through um, and actually do the documentation of the system. Um, scores are calculated for them automatically. Um, then that all data is available and time synchronized with the physiological data as the data set for various visualizations. Um, and then you basically get your, your normal standard summary um, of a critical care bed of the, the information and more visualizations are coming. Um, the last piece of this is actually then the incorporation of the tele-ICU. Um, for our system and our platform, you can actually write directly at the bedside. You know, you can tap into the audio, video, and messaging. Um, but at the same time, that remote care provider can actually see um, that bedside doc box system, and they can interact with that system. They can do the documentation from a remote location, um, as well as have the ability to visualize everything that's being seen and documented directly at the bedside. Um, by the clinical staff um, in real time um, between the two systems. Um, as I said, um, we can get operational and specific patient summary data. Um, we do this, a lot of this, this is part of our revenue recovery screen. Um, so we can actually see how long they've, they've been admitted, um, how much device utilization they've had. They, we can review what bedside procedures occurred on this patient um, as it goes forward. And this is actually calculated in that um, you know, from the exact same data that you saw from the, the first data set, this isn't, doesn't require any additional documentation on the clinical side for automation. Um, we can look at long-term data for a unit um, or a hospital. Um, so we can look at the number of admission events. We can look at the number of beds. We can look at average length of stay. Um, this data is actually com computed um, as frequently as you would like to be computed. Um, you know, historically, we've done this for per month. Um, sometimes we've done this per week. Um, at the location we've seen. And finally, you know, what is the future capabilities of this and where it's going? As I mentioned, um, we're looking at a safety framework as part of the platform. Um, we'll be leveraging not only DDS Secure, but DDS Quality of Service and, and DDS Observation Framework um, to actually look at that safety framework and that security framework. Um, other things that are in the is is you know we've been working with partner vendor um, third you know medical device vendors around the remote controlled medical devices and finally this autonomous medical systems which is autonomous system and the last piece of this is now going to the next level of this is can we do direct sensor integration into this platform so you can have a suite of sensors and start to build your own combination of medical devices and visualizations on the platform, um, leveraging the platform without additional hardware as it looks going forward. Um, one of the biggest key factors um, of work and research we have right now 
um, which is where DocPox has always started, is what is the regulatory science and safety concerns for autonomous systems? What does this platform need to do to actually provide that support? Um, how is that going to make that easier for the regulators to understand? Um, and what is the data and information that we have that will be leveraged um, for that? Um, and and you're, we're working through that with not only the regulators, but also safety researchers into understanding um, how do you go about this? How do you build this safety critical system for medical um, as other industries have already built? Um, so a couple examples. Um, this is some video, uh, some photographs from a demonstration we did last November um, where we actually remotely controlled a ventilator um, from um, what was a military scenario um, from uh, Washington State to Washington, the Washington DC metro area. Um, and it was allowing for a telemedicine consult that the, the remote care provider could actually just change the ventilator settings for that patient. Um, the next scenario that we actually did was in an, a, a, was basically a, a medevac um, drone um, evacuation scenario um, where the dock box system would be attached on board to the drone and that a remote provider could dial in and actually be able to, to control an infusion pump um, in this situation, in this scenario. Um, all while they were getting, um, you know, real-time operational data, real-time patient data about that patient and what was going on with that medic um, in parallel to having audio and audio communication with them at the same time. Um, so if you guys want to see the full videos of these demonstrations, I left the links here. Um, there's, they're quite long, but they are broken up in segments and they're indexed so you can um, move through it. And I would like to thank everyone for their time today. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Teresi. Thank you so much. Uh, it was fascinating. I, I, I will definitely open those links. Um, now, Rona, to you, to the Q and A part. Uh, uh, all the panelists are here, so hit us. Thank you, thank you, everyone. We we received some great questions, and uh, the first uh, question is from Ben. He asks. Uh, if I have a product, a medical robot, that already works excellently, is it possible and does it make sense to integrate DDS into it? The, que the, the question is to uh, Darren or Gal? Yeah, I could start with that. I would say that uh, it, typically what we're seeing is uh, there is a things are, are changing and so the there's a lot of um, in these technology in, in these at types of applications that are emerging and are leveraging uh, connected uh, devices and data and real-time control uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, movement and what's required and the the level of integration and so typically uh, the um, the, the only thing that is uh, for certain is change. <laughs> and so as these devices and applications uh, evolve, so you've got uh, now you have um, orthopedic applications or uh, abdominal procedures or other types of procedures that need to do more things. Uh, more, they need to provide additional levels of guidance and support. They need to integrate other devices and systems. Uh, what happens is it's it's a lot more than the robot and and it gets a lot more complicated very quickly and this is what we're seeing more and more of that that it's not just about the robot it's about uh the connectivity of the data-driven technologies to uh to uh, enable that uh uh overall clinical solution and so uh that's where uh we're seeing this this movement of uh and and where we're seeing a lot of um uh, companies are working with a lot of companies in in surgical robotics as, uh precisely for that reason thank you thank you darren uh next question is from ilan uh, if I need real-time data transfer from advanced medical equipment, how long will it take to integrate DDS into the system? So I can take it, Darren, if you want. Yeah, sure. Here, go um, ahead, Carl. So DDS from an API perspective is very simple to implement eventually. Uh, the basic concept is a uh, high-level publish subscribe API. So this part is pretty quick. Uh, the most time that you will spend on implementing DDS is part of the configuration and the quality of service, which I mentioned before. 
Uh, but again, you don't have to set up the qu quality of service uh, too much. Uh, by default, DDS works, and it's already most of it is already optimized to provide you the real-time uh, latency that you need for your application. Thank you, Gal. Uh, next question is from Abital. How do you protect the data without slowing it down as it moves between the device and other medical equipment? So I, I can tackle that one. So um, we've actually leveraged an um, DDS secure, which is part of that data encryption as it goes through. And um, with the amount of data coming off most medical devices, we don't actually see any change in, in uh, uh, ability to actually move data or the speed of moving that data through. Um, we also ha, um, can protect that data through um, the series of the architecture of the DocBox platform as we have it, that um, we have a micro network around the bedside that doesn't expose itself to everyone else. So we actually have multiple layers of security in order to protect the data, not only through encryption, but also limited access. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. yeah, and I would just to add to that, you know, Gal described that a bit on the technical side is this this framework was literally designed for secure distributed, you know, safety critical data flow. So so the the ability to, you know, to have that fine grained control uh on on the on the security and and uh be able to have quality of service so that you can prioritize the the data flows that need to be prioritized, you can apply filtering. Uh, and the message infrastructure provides all of that. So, so it, uh, from the get-go, it, it, it's optimized. Uh, it enables that optimization of both performance and security. Well, um, next next question is from uh, for Tracy as well. Uh, are you supervised by FDA? If so, how did DDS integrate with it? And what was RTI part at your project? Um, so we actually, our platform itself right now by the FDA, we're, we're in kind of a gray area, um, but we've actually worked with the FDA since prior to the actual the inception of our project um, of what this is going to look like in that framework. So um, we actually, each individual application, our platform goes through its own regulatory process. Um, and um, if a FDA approved device would go onto our system, then that application or that device can actually leverage a master file for connectivity. Um, and that's very oversimplified conversation here. Um, so they have um, recommended, you know, they the FDA is, um, you know, has has looked at the system, understand this, understands the safety implications of it going forward. Um, you know, and RTI has actually, you know, helped us with that of answering questions, having that partnership as we go through and look at it. Um, but DocBox is on the research and development side as well as our partners. A majority of our work is actually around the regulatory science research of this and the research of the safety side of things. So that's where we sit in a foundation of going forward for this. Yeah, and uh, just to add to that, so we have a number of customers, uh, many customers that are deployed uh, and, you know, they have to achieve regulatory approval and, and things like that. And so our, our software is, is the, there's a back, is kind of the backbone for the backbone. So we're, we're the foundation. Uh, however, how that is used is very much the device manufacturer. So how that, what, what is, what is the application? Uh, what is the the functionality? What are the what are the the what's the risk management? All of those things. So, so essentially, we're um, uh, we're soup uh, basically software of, of of known providence, and we work. We provide um, you know the, the the typical documentation to support uh, the device manufacturer uh, that uh, that follow they need to follow the sixty two three hundred four and and other regulatory guidances for um, for off the shelf software. But it's very much tied to the intended use of the system. Um, and so uh, we're, you know, but, but we, 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 this is very uh, common uh, for us and we work with, com with, with the customers and provide whatever uh, documentation is needed to support their 62304 and off the shelf guidance um, uh, documentation. Thank you. Um, next, next question is from Daniel. Uh, to what extent do medical device vendors buy into the infrastructure? Can hospitals force device vendors to buy into such a hospital data infrastructure, or can this already provide value in a standalone way via custom integrations? 
so so we do this there's a there's a couple ways to do this um, um so one um the medical we don't actually write a device interface or a device driver um without actually having a communication with the device the device manufacturers themselves. We don't reverse engineer any of our interfaces with those vendors. Um, we write to their specification. We have that conversation with them. We engage with them um, and we provide feedback. Um, the hospitals can force that they have this ability to have the connectivity, what di de device data that needs to, to be there. Um, this is a very slow market to change. Um, so finally, to answer your question, we do write um, device drivers to these systems, we will be providing a, an open SDK for doing that. Um, when we write those device drivers, we do a couple of things. We parse all of that data out. We transform it to a standardized vocabulary. We, we standardize it to a standardized messaging structure. Um, and, you know, we have started to work with a couple of vendors about, you know, how do you customize that? How do you, how do you natively send this communication protocol? But we also recognize that um, you know, there's a lot of value proposition, a lot of value, uh, low hanging fruit with, um, you know, with what exists on current interfaces, but there is a lot of work um, and a lot of communication that occurs not only through the standards community, but through other activities of being able to um, inform vendors of what actually needs to be on their interface and how they need to send and communicate that data. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, next question is from Alex to measure some sensors and control power transmission accordingly. Can I use this framework to implement monitor and control loop of five to 20 milliseconds deterministic rate? I think uh, Gaul, that might be a, a good one to talk yeah, about. So, or... Sorry, did you catch the question? Can you repeat us, please? Uh, yeah, Alex, Alex asks, to measure some sensors and control power transmission accordingly, can I use this framework to implement monitor and control loop of 5 to 20 milliseconds deterministic rate? Yeah, so DDS eventually, uh, from a latency perspective, is a sub millisecond latency uh, framework. So you can work with DDS like with uh, like 1K messages or even more under like around like 30 or 40 microsecond latency uh, with a very high deterministic rate. So this kind of uses, use case of uh, a few milli, uh, uh, hertz, like a millisecond level of hertz, that will be fine. Thank you, Gal. Uh, I think we, um, this is the last questions. Uh, other questions uh, we will just uh, answer offline. Um, we hope you enjoyed uh, attending our webinar as much as we enjoyed putting it together. And as always, we are ready to assist you in any way possible. And after the webinar, we will share with you the webinar recording and the contact details of the speakers. And we hope to see you on our next event. Thank you again for coming and have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Rona. Thank you, RTI team. Thank you, Matrix team. Thank you, everyone. It was our pleasure. And bye-bye. Uh, Later.